The gastrointestinal system begins at the mouth and ends at the anus. We therefore need to consider the mouth, esophagus, stomach, duodenum, small and large intestine, the rectum and anus. Also consider the accessory organs and their functional integration, including the hepatobiliary system, the pancreas, the lymphatic system, and the hepatic portal circulation. The whole of this tubular structure and its associated organs may produce a variety of symptoms, including pain that is well or poorly localized, diffuse or referred. Therefore, a thorough inquiry into the presenting complaint, including the character of any pain, its onset, triggering and relieving factors, patterns and associated phenomena are all important. When inquiring about abdominal symptoms, always consider the urinary system and the male and female reproductive systems. The circulatory system, in particular the hepatic portal circulation and lymphatic structures, are also relevant here. Getting a clear description of the character of pain, distribution and any patterns will help you in your differential diagnosis. If the patient is unable to localize the symptoms, at least try to establish whether these are epigastric, periampilical or hypogastric. In very acute conditions, especially if there is a degree of peritonitis present, it will make it even more difficult to be accurate about the nature of the problem. Try to resist offering the acute patient pain-relieving medications such as opiates before you had established the diagnosis. Meanwhile, consider a nil-by-mouth policy. If the patient is very acute, try to establish whether the condition is one that may require urgent intervention such as a perforated ulcer, pancreatitis, diverticulitis, a ruptured or obstructed structure. Visceral pain can be difficult to localize as organs and associated tissues are supplied by the autonomic nervous system. Visceral afferent nerves synapse at various ganglia and form plexuses as they enter at one or more spinal levels. Unlike somatic nerve supply, the viscera are not confined to a unilateral and ipsilateral distribution. Visceral afferent fibers relay these sensations mostly via sympathetic nerves. The problem of attribution is further complicated by the embryological development and migration of the gut. Generally, referred visceral pain will relate to three regions of embryological development – the foregut, midgut and hindgut. Likewise, the above regions will receive their arterial supply from the celiac, superior and inferior mesenteric arteries. Also of note are the limited types of stimuli the viscera are able to perceive. Primarily, these are restricted to the stretching and contraction of tubular structures and also the pain from an eroded or perforated wall. In addition, ischemia and the subsequent buildup of metabolites will also generate pain. The visceral peritoneum is also insensitive to pain, unlike the outer or parietal peritoneum. Another anatomical arrangement that affects the referral of visceral pain to the abdominal walls is the anterior or posterior location of an organ in relation to the peritoneum. Important retroperitoneal structures include the kidneys, ureters, bladder, duodenum and most of the pancreas. These will refer pain to the posterior abdominal wall by virtue of their proximity. Retroperitoneal structures can often lead to muscular symptoms, for example spasms of the psoas muscle, from kidney or ureter pain. Let us now review some of the most common gastrointestinal conditions. Peptic ulcers, peritonitis, bowel obstruction, gastrointestinal infections and gastroenteritis, appendicitis, inflammatory bowel disease, hepatitis and cirrhosis, pancreatitis, hernias, 
gallbladder disease, conditions affecting the oral cavity and esophagus, food intolerances and sensitivities, gastrointestinal neoplasia, congenital and functional disorders. Having reviewed the structures and principles influencing abdominal pain, let us now consider some important case history questions. Is the patient suffering from abdominal pain? If so, what is the character and location? Does it arise from within the abdomen, from the abdominal wall, referred from a thoracic structure or the esophagus? Does the pain vary with changes in position? Does anything aggravate or relieve the symptoms, for example, eating or fasting? Does it vary with different types of food? Does the pain change with changes in posture? Is the pain affected by medications? Do they suffer from bloating or a noticeable swelling of the abdomen? Do they experience dysphagia, that is problems with swallowing? Has the patient noticed any significant weight changes? And are the reasons for this known? Is the patient troubled by mouth ulcers or a sore tongue? Do they suffer from reflux and if so, is it of acidic nature or is it water brush? Is there a history of hiatus or abdominal hernia? Do they suffer from undue nausea or vomiting? If so, is the nausea related to particular types of food, beverages or is it drug related? Inquire about the character of vomiting. Is it violent or projectile? with or without nausea, or does it smell of feces? Any hematemesis, that is the vomiting of blood? If so, what is the color? Is it bright red, or is it dark and resembling coffee granules? Do they complain of flatulence or burping? Have the patient's bowel habits changed recently? Do they have diarrhea or constipation? Has there been any recent changes in their stools, including frequency, consistency, color or smell? Is there any blood in the stools, pain or discomfort with defecating? If blood is present, is it bright red, external to the stool or mixed? Do they have melina, that is black, tarry stools? Inquire if their stools are oily, unformed, malodorous and if they are difficult to flush. Is this steatorrhea? Do they have any weakness of sphincter control or incontinence? Is there any yellowing of the skin or the sclerosis of the eyes and itchiness indicating jaundice? Gastrointestinal system red flags include acute or persistent abdominal pain, especially when accompanied by a raised pulse rate and changes to blood pressure, rigid abdomen, sweating, rigors, and guarding. Dysphagia, jaundice, frank blood on the stool, melina, that is dark, tarry stools, symptoms of anemia, spider nevi, caput medusae, or significant ascites, unexplained weight loss, persistent nausea or vomiting, hematuria, gynecomastia, hematemesis, steatorrhea, recent changes in bowel habit, changes in appetite including early satiety, high alcohol consumption, long-term administration of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, and history of peptic ulcer or abdominal operations.